Hello everyone, it is Monday in Paris and that means an episode of the Earful Tower presented to you by French Today Audiobooks. They're the guys that are sponsoring the show, audiobooks to teach you French. That's how I'm learning French. More information about them at the very end of the episode, including uh, how you can get a discount if you want to learn along with me. But today we're here to talk about spend, spend, spending in Paris. In fact, I got an email from a listener who said, Oliver, we're not all on a budget in Paris. You seem to be talking about how to save money all the time. And what about those of us who can spend? Well, lucky you, I say. Firstly, because you're in a position to be spending in Paris. But secondly, lucky you, uh, because today's guest is a luxury travel writer, Leah Walker. And she joined me in the studio to talk about how to spend money in Paris. In fact, we talked about how to spend money and also how to save money while spending money. It sounds complicated, but you'll hear. She explains it. In other words, there's something in there for all of you guys listening. Uh, and I'm going to quote Leah. I've never done this before, starting the episode with a quote, but she said somewhere in the episode, Paris is a city made for spending money. There's temptation around every corner. So with that in mind, uh, let's get into the episode. But first, you hear at the very end of this episode that uh, I asked Leah if she wanted to do a walk show with me. And if you're new around here, a walk show, it's like a talk show, but while walking streamed live on the internet. And she said, she said, well, sure, let's do it. And we agreed to do one in Plus Dauphine in the first hour in this month. And would you believe it, today, Monday, the 11th of February, we are going to do it. If you're listening to this episode right after it comes out, you might still be in time to catch it live. 2.30 p.m. Paris time, we're going to be walking around the Plus Dauphine and hopefully going into one of the apartments that uh, Leah has access to through Paris Perfect property rentals. So go and check that out on YouTube. If you missed it live, it will be there on the replay. And this whole week, I'm doing live videos from around Paris. I've called it the Seven Wonders of Paris. Everything is in there. One for every day of the week, Monday through to Sunday. There's the Arc de Triomphe, Champs Elysees, Eiffel Tower, uh, the Marais, with a load of really good guests. Uh, if you didn't know about this already, you haven't been looking at the site, go and subscribe on YouTube at the Eiffel Tower and watch one of them live, and I hope to see you there. But anyway, back to the topic at hand, spending in Paris. Enjoy this episode with Leah Walker. You're listening to the Eiffel Tower with Oliver G. Leah Walker, that's a good name. Yeah, like Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, and you've got the Texas connection too. Mm -hmm. Where are you from exactly? That's not an easy question. Uh, I was born in Dallas, but most of my adult life was spent in Austin and Houston. Ooh, mm -hmm. all the big cities. Yeah, but I'm a small town girl. I grew up in a town of about 1,500 people. Wow, what's it called? Spur. Spur, S-P-U-R? <laughs> really? Yeah, it doesn't get any more Texan than that. Wow, the town of Spur, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Le Leah Walker from the town of Spur. Yeah, it sounds like a cowboy, right? Yeah, wow, that's cool. Mm. Um, San Antonio Spurs basketball team. Yeah, yeah, actually the owner of San Antonio Spurs, Red McCombs, is from Spur. Well, you learn something new every day. Oh, yeah. You know, I went to, uh, I crossed America, I did a road trip, and I went to the Basketball Museum of Texas, which is in a small town in the middle of nowhere, right? I mean, middle of nowhere. Do you remember the name? Uh, Carmine? Carm something like that? Carmen Carmine? I used to be a basketball coach, and I don't even, I didn't even really? know this place existed. Okay, so you get this, tiny little place run by, and so in the museum's only anything to do with basketball in Texas. Mm. So you won't find any Michael Jordan there, but you'll find Shaquille O'Neal because he went to college there, right? Uh, no, he went to LSU, but he's from San Antonio. He had some connection to Houston. He, his father was in uh, the military, and he was ah. uh, went to high school in San Antonio. Okay, right. So he'd have yeah. basketball stuff from high school for yeah. Shaq, right? Yeah. So I went in there, and it was a tiny, tiny museum, and I went in, and they were closed, and I had to try and persuade him to open. And I was like, ah. Uh, Oh, you know, I was a pretty big basketball player back in uh, Western Australia. And he goes, <laughs> so he takes me in and he shows me around and my wife and we're showing around, having a good time. And then at the end, he's like, hey, I got something for you. And he, uh, he pulled out some old like magazines for me and gave me a basketball and said, will you sign this so I can put it on display? And no. I, was so, I was so embarrassed. And people started coming in and they're like, oh, who's this guy? I was like, hey, I was a... Anyway, <laughs> what a segue that went down the rabbit hole. Um, yeah, we didn't fast. come here to talk about spur or basketball. No. We came to talk about Paris. And who better than you to talk about Paris when it comes to luxury travel? Because that's part of what you do, isn't it? It is. It is. And how would you define yourself? Because that's a, that's a tough one. That is very tough. At, at heart, I'm a writer. Um, and that sort of has morphed into several different things. Um, photography, hosting, marketing, 
That's a lot of hats already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and, and it doesn't make sense on the surface, but when you dig a little deeper, there is a, a common thread amongst all of them. It, what's the common thread? Is it Paris? Well, yes, of course there's Paris, but um, I think it's it's really the um, promotion. Right. Just marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and what is it that, uh, that, that, you know, made you want to promote Paris of all places? Well, I like to share my passion. Mm. So... Um, when I was a teacher, I was a high school English teacher and basketball coach. In um, Spur? No, 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 no. In Houston and Austin. Right. But um, I like to teach, and I like to. Sh- I was passionate about basketball. I was passionate about Shakespeare. I was passionate about you know literature, and then my passion shifted, and I'm passionate about Paris. So I want people to feel what I feel about Paris and and to experience Paris as I have because I really feel like it's um it's strange but it that I have been here before mm. I actually came here it was a it felt like home right right that's interesting because a lot of people are the opposite they come here and they they freak out because everything can be quite difficult oh yeah no that's difficult mm. but 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 there was a, a just a, a calmness. Are we, are we talking spiritual kind of calmness? I don't, I'm not really spiritual, but in a way, I guess that that's the only way to describe it to people I, because it just felt like home. Yeah. That's it. I, and, and I was basically traveling around the world for, you know, three years prior to coming to Paris. And I finally just said, oh, enough. I want to, you know, I want to put my feet down and this feels like home and I feel comfortable. I don't understand a damn word anybody yeah. is saying, but... <laughs> You know, this is home. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And so you, you felt this. I think I have a feeling a lot of the people that listen to this show love Paris. And I have a feeling around the world that nodding their head and mm. going, I get that feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're one of the fortunate people that managed to stay here mm-hmm. on an unusual, I was going to say loophole. It's not a loophole. It's a, it's a, a visa that not many people have heard about. Yeah, I know. Um, the first one was a, a competencies and talents visa, which uh, allows me to to live and work in France, um, and it was based off of um, mainly my writing and promoting and my association with the French government tourism office um, and promoting France back to my home country. And uh, that was a three-year visa, and I renewed it last year for four mm-hmm. uh, for a passport and talent visa, which is basically the same thing, but um, it's more strict as far as the uh, criteria for being able to uh, qualify. And so I had to prove I was an internationally renowned person. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> was that was that you went you took you and the mayor went for a walk down the street and waited for people to recognize you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a sash and yeah, uh, yeah I was um, signing autographs like you were at the the museum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Faking it. So that's pretty cool. You've yeah. come up uh, and anyone out there thinking I want to come to Paris on a similar visa, would you recommend that road? Well, if you qualify, why not? Yeah. Just just know that uh, ex- expect the the worst and hope for the best. Mm. And um, you know, it's a it's a rocky road, and to be able to navigate the French um, government, mm. the bureaucracy, <laughs> uh, the papers. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not easy. And um, if it weren't for trial and error and a lot of really good people that uh, helped me navigate. Mm. Um, I might not still be here. Not to mention a bit of talent in there as well, Leah. Well, per- perhaps. I mean, that that's the foot in the door. You know what I like about the stuff that you do? We were talking about it before. Uh, when you do on Instagram, where you've got a sizable following, mm-hmm. uh, I like you when you write Instagram, when you do Instagram stories, there's actually a story there, you know? Like a lot of people just go, including myself, just go, here's the Eiffel Tower, here's the Notre Dame, and you're, like, you're often like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Follow me along. Come here with me. Well, that's partly, that's the teacher in me. Right. I mean, like I said, I was a teacher for 10 years, so I I haven't lost that. I like to teach people, right. I guess. And um, part of that also makes me learn. Right. You know, I have, if I'm curious, like uh, I was at the church. Um, yeah, Saint Vincent de Paul next door. And I spotted a building across the road and I thought, my God, there's a story there. Yeah. And I'm going to find out what it is. Mm. And so I'll do the research and then... Part of teaching is also helping me remember 
<laughs> sure. Like they say that if you can teach something, it means you understand it yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So for me to be able to teach something, I have to have all the facts straight right. and um, and then I keep repeating it and then yeah. eventually it sinks in because there's only so much space in this brain. I, it's I have to pull some things out sometimes yeah. to add new stuff. It would be nice if you could take stuff out of your brain, out of your brain and put it like in a cupboard and then get it back <laughs> again later. But once it's out, it's usually out, isn't it? Uh, yeah. What did you teach? Um high school english so is that the shakespeare connection yeah 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 is it do you do you get into the french playwrights and authors or are you more english all the way well my well my french is terrible but, but even like translation that's changing stuff. in 2019 but um no actually I've, I've gotten away from literature which all my french friends say no 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 to understand the french culture you really have to get into the french literature right. um I'm more interested in the French history. Mm. Um, I like to... That's surprising because I, I didn't like history growing up, but that's really my passion and um, is is learning the history, and, I, and I'm horrible with dates. So don't ever ask me a date. I can tell you other details, but <laughs> don't right. ask me a date. You know, often I think the dates are the least interesting. Well, you like, just say, but, you know, 1700s. Yeah, but even, like, sometimes if you're showing someone, like, if I have a family visiting or if I'm, you know, showing someone around and I show them, you know, here's the, for example, the Philip August wall that I'm obsessed mm. with. I actually know that that's from 1180, right? But they don't care, really. I think you say it's an old wall. This is centuries, centuries old, yeah. and it used to go around Paris. They care more about the wall and the story than, uh, you know, it's very rare that someone is going to go, Wow, that looks more like a 1280 wall to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, that, that's, I mean, you kind of, it's, I always used to say my, uh, when I, my teaching method was putting um, cheese on the broccoli. You know, sometimes you have to, yeah. to cover up the, the good stuff uh, with the exciting Is stuff. Is that an American thing, cheese on the broccoli? I don't know. I just, yeah. maybe, maybe it's a Texas it thing. Could be a, <laughs> uh, it could be an uh, Italian or a French thing as well, putting cheese on stuff to make it taste better. I don't know. This is more like Velveeta processed cheese. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking a lot. Cheese on the broccoli. I like it a lot. We're not talking about brie or anything. Uh, you know what, Leah? We came to talk about how to splurge in Paris. Oh, yeah. And so far we've talked about Shakespeare, broccoli, basketball, <laughs> and spur Texas. Okay, yeah. We've we've uh, we've had a long introduction, but I think it's really interesting. Indeed. Um, but I, I like this idea of uh, we had a, someone emailed in, I think uh, a listener who said... Uh, Oliver, all you're doing is telling us how to save money in Paris. Some of us want to splurge. Mm. And I said, well, lucky you to that listener, Ruth, I think her name was. Mm. Um, and then I talked to you, Leah, and I said, hey, uh, you want to do an episode about splurging? And you said, sure. Yeah. So uh, I think maybe what we can start with is I'll put you in a scenario, uh, and it's that someone's given you a credit card, and they say it's unlimited. You have three days in Paris. Stay where you want, eat what you want go where you want, what would you do? Oh, gosh. Well, Paris is a city made for spending money. Mm. I mean, it's there's 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 temptation around every corner. And, um, well, I think, actually, the luxury, the biggest luxury is just being in Paris. Mm. I mean, the, the, the ability to come. But, um, you know, with, with any amount of money, anything's possible right. in Paris. Right. And things that you can't even imagine are possible in Paris. Um, the hotels are amazing. You have your palace hotels. Um, what does that mean, the palace hotels? So the you have five-star hotels and then you have palace hotels, which is a distinction of the French government. And they're, they have, they're usually historic, so a historic building, and then they have to, to reach a certain level of um, luxury. Is this like a hotel particular you're talking mm, no, 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 no. So you have like the Maurice and the Georges V, the Four Seasons, the Shangri-La, um, so they're, they're palace hotels. Yeah, if, and in fact, it says it um, on the wall. When, you, when you're walking in the entrance, it'll have a palace. Right. So I think there's, I would have to look, uh, there's about seven or eight in Paris right, right now. Right, right. So all the usual suspects that, um, you know, the Grand Dames of, uh, of yeah. the, the, the Ritz, I mean, the, the historic hotels that are just like, uber luxurious i mean you can't go wrong with any of those it's sort of like the bristol i mean where do you want to stay in the city yeah. um so so when people say they're uh, staying in a palace hotel if, if 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 i say to them what hotel are you staying at would they be like <laughs> no it's a palace hotel 
Is there an actual distinction or is it more just a way for us to... No, no, no. It's it's an actual Goodness distinction me. from the government. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's a good place to start if you fancy staying in hotels. Stay at a hotel. If, if you don't want to stay in a hotel and you want something uh, as luxurious but more private, you can always stay with... My favorite apartment rental company, Paris Perfect, mm-hmm. which I also work for them. And what do they, and what do, they do? Um, you wh- can promote them. Right? <laughs> well, I I work for them and I I love them. I've stayed in many of their apartments. Most of their apartments are um, on the left bank, sixth, seventh. Um, Eiffel Tower views like in your bed. Mm, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I mean, literally, you can you can reach out and touch the Eiffel Tower and uh, impeccably decorated. Is where all the, the Instagrammers are going for for these Instagram shots I keep seeing? Well, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, probably not recently, but um, because I'm in charge of the. Um, Ah. The blogger and influencer ah, marketing. So you're the one I have to talk to to yes. go out and take that picture. Yeah, you better okay. be nice to me. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> wow, you're looking great today, Leah. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Okay, so you can stay in Paris perfect if you want yeah, to have yeah. more of a local experience. Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And what about like things like shopping and... Uh, oh, that's dangerous. Is it? Yeah. Paris so so if dangerous. you... like, but, but honestly, if you had that credit card and so... Okay, let's say you are two hours... Mm. So I'm talking specifically to you. You know your mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And they say, here, you just, uh, we're putting you in an Uber to the, or, we're not sponsored by Uber. I can say taxi. <laughs> we're putting you in a car that's going to take you to uh, whatever destination you want for two hours of shopping. Where mm-hmm. are you going to go? I would, well, I would go to Hermes. Right. Yeah. Where is that? Well, there's several locations. Oh. Uh, I could, you could, could go to the one in Saint-Germain-de-Prés or... Um, the the flagship on Rue Saint Honoré. Oh, that's that's an, that's down where all the Ritz and everything. Uh, yeah, near the Mandarin, the Mandarin Oriental down right. around there. I avoid those areas in case I accidentally walk into a shop and buy something. Uh, yeah, like well, a bottle of water or something. <laughs> no, I I mean there you can go to to the Golden Triangle, you know Avenue Montaigne. Uh, Wait, what's the Golden Triangle? I don't know. Well, so you have Avenue Montaigne, um, the Georges V, and okay. what's uh, Champs Elysees? Yeah, or? so up up in the, the that the eighth. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, the eighth. across from the Eiffel Tower. So yeah, they call it the the Golden Triangle because wow. you know you need bars of gold to shop there. <laughs> so that's where you'd go as well. Well, I, I mean, I walk through there. I yeah. don't. I don't. You know, go on a daily basis. Is but it, I bet it's good people watching there as well. Yeah, I you see posh people with. Posh dogs on posh leashes. Well, especially around you know fashion weeks, oh. it's it's always interesting to to watch the the editors and the stylists and the you know Instagram famous models yeah. and stuff like that. And so. what about what about eating? Oh God, well I was at the Michelin Star Awards uh, for 2019 about 10 days ago, and there I think. Uh, would have to count. I don't know. It's Japan or France who has the most Michelin starred uh, right. yeah. restaurants in the country. Um, well, you know, you have great chefs. You have all the great French chefs: mm-hmm. Alain Ducasse, Guy, um, let's see, Guy Savoy, Alain Pissard, Joel Robichon. I mean, there's three star Michelin restaurants, uh, but you can you can go to two star, mm. one star. One there's some great one star. There's great restaurants that are not even with a star but um yeah you could some of the most expensive tables in the world are in paris really oh yeah yeah you go to the plaza anthony um the the maurice with alan ducasse and yeah just some phenomenal yeah dining experiences um la Sanque at the at the four seasons incredible i mean it's, it's a pretty good place to to go for a nice meal or a nice drink this city isn't it if you've got the money to spend on it yeah yeah for sure i mean you, without wine you can well you know you can also save as well you can go for lunch right this is something we talked about i think if there are any listeners out there thinking well well goodness me oliver and leah i don't have the kind of money to be going out for these kind of days well we've got some good news for you is when we were discussing what we we're going to talk about leah said well you know you can splurge without actually spending a lot of money and i said what and maybe you could walk us through that idea well, just, I mean, just like with any restaurant, it's always cheaper at lunch. Mm. So um, instead of going to that, you know, three-star Michelin, two-star Michelin restaurant for dinner where you're going to have wine and, and the price is higher, you can go at lunch 
and maybe just have a glass instead of a bottle of wine. Mm. And a lot of times they'll have prefix menus. They'll have, um, you know, set menus or tasting menus that um, are special, especially in the low season. You know, maybe not July, <laughs> but if you go in January, February, mm. it's, it's possible that the chefs have something special. So, you know, you just have to keep a lookout, but it's not, you can still have a splurge, luxurious experience without, without spending as much money if you just, if you just go at lunch mm. or if you want to have, uh, that environment, go have a drink at the bar, mm. Mm. you know, um, like if you want a four seasons experience, you can go to La bar or if you want a Ritz experience, uh, go, go to the Hemingway bar. You're, yeah. s- you're still going to drop 30 euros sure. for a drink. Yeah. Yep. Um, or go to the Maurice for tea and have a have a pastry by Cedric Grolet, who's amazing. Yeah, I follow him on Instagram too. That's he, amazing. Uh, yeah, he's just and he's so nice as is well. He? Yeah, yeah, he's super nice. His English isn't that great, but shame I could have had him on the show. <laughs> well, my French isn't great either. So uh, you guys must have fun. When <laughs> we you get were, <laughs> we're just pointing at stuff. <laughs> uh, what the other thing you said is that uh, it's not just food. If you want to splurge in Paris. Uh, but you don't have the money to do to, to go crazy. You were talking about uh, timing it right with the sales and stuff like that. Yeah, like right now, there's maybe ten days left of the sales. The they they're government regulated, obviously. Uh, well, not obviously. Um, twice a year, um, July and August, and um, late January through February, you have about six weeks sale period, and it's it's. Um, staggered so you know maybe you get 30 percent off at the beginning but right now it's just at gallery lafayette and most everything that was on sale was at least 50 percent off crazy yeah. so um and plus if you're not living in the eu you get your tax back if you spend more than 175 dollars at the store that day Okay. So, and that can be 12%. So it's really a good deal. I mean, if you want to go, I mean, you're not going to go to Hermes and get, you know, a, a deal on a Birkin bag. That just yeah. doesn't happen. Sure. But um, if you're looking for uh, just to, to save some money, plus the hotels are going to be less expensive. And when you go in the off season. So what's the op- off season is, is like winter of European winter, basically. Yeah. I mean, January, February, mm. usually pretty slow. When when spring ramps up, it, uh, you know, the prices get higher what's the best month to visit paris best for what best for let's say you're deported back to texas oh god and they say you got one trip left you get a whole month but it's the last trip it's the last hurrah when would you come Mm. a calendar month maybe maybe september Mm. because the weather is still nice the tourists have gone and Parisians have just come back from their vacation, so they're unusually relaxed. They're calm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's an energy, you know. All the horns <laughs> stop beeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was back to school. Yeah. You know, people were back to work. Everybody's a little bit more tan. It's, it's, um, yeah. There's an energy about September. Yeah. That I like. Plus, it's my birthday, so you'd be oh, there for that. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> I'll take you for a drink at the Hemingway. Bar. Oh, and now you've said it. It's on the record. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Um, we also got to talk about uh, other things that you're doing in town. What's this? Secret Journeys. Secret Journeys is an amazing new venture that I'm working on. It's not um, joining um, a guy named Philippe, who is like the Wizard of Oz. Mm. He can create anything. I mean, the Paris wizard. Oh yeah, yeah. If it, he uh, he he creates things that you didn't even imagine could be created. You, it sounds like you're being a lo- like too mysterious for me. What is this? Who is? What is? It? Okay, why is he the wizard of Paris? I don't know. His his imagination, his his contacts, his connections. He he develops things that um, that you you never really thought would be possible so things so things like he he privatized the eiffel tower and the palace of versailles for michelle obama yeah he did that, that. kind of thing yeah he did that yeah i gotta get this guy on the show too <laughs> you're gonna put a good word in with philippe for me yeah 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 but so, what so what are you working on uh, what's the secret journeys well we're working on um co-creating some walking journeys um and also some new secret journeys he has um 11 secret journeys currently in his catalog which there is one that I love. It's um, the Notre Dame. That sounds like you just gave away the secret. No, 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 no. I, I just lost my uh, my words for a minute. No, no, not Notre Dame uh, privatized after it's closed. Right. 
um, you go in with a historian and um, there's nobody there. There's no no tourists. Uh, right. It's just closed. And you go in through a side entrance and you have this historian who takes you around. You go up to the to the rafters that probably the hunchback of Notre Dame mm. um, wandered. And it's just I get to do some really, really cool things. And this one still. Wow. Amazing. And it and it happens every Tuesday because there's a concert at Notre Dame. So you can, uh, w- when they're, they, they've kicked out the tourist and before they start the concert is your hour, hour and right. a half. So it's like when they're warming up for, and you say concert, this isn't Metallica or. No, well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it, it, it varies. kind of stuff or. No, it, no, it varies really? because uh, Notre Dame has its own uh, music program that yeah. uh, from young people on up and, and part of the proceeds go from the the tours that are sold go to support the the music right. at and Notre is, Dame. That's a really good idea. So is this yeah. um are the um, tickets to book a tour like that splurging in Paris or is this? Well, I, actually, I think it's really reasonable. Um, the price for that is 190 euros without the concert. If you want the concert, I think it's 50 euros more. But to go, I would I would have paid double that. Really? I mean, especially if you're. Uh, a devout Catholic, if you're an architecture buff, if you're a history history buff, mm. if you just don't want to deal with crowds and you want something exclusive, mm. 190 euros, mm. that's like a, I mean, I guess that's it's like, relative. That, that's but, like I mean, a that's, round of drinks at the Hemingway bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. A, also if you're a for hunch- six For six people. Right, right, exactly. Also, yeah. if you're a hunchback enthusiast, it would probably be quite nice up there. Yeah, yeah I think so. But this is um, this is just one of the things that, that I can't give away all the rest. But you no. can you can go to secretjourneys.travel and look uh, at the other. And this story that you mentioned uh, right, right before we came into the studio about how you did the tour in the uh, in the Notre Dame Cathedral. Cathedral? Church? I never really know. Cathedral, but Cathedral, Cathedral. Yeah. I somewhat say, I know Cathedral and Basilica. Every time I say one of them, someone corrects me that it's the other one. So church? I can say church, right? Yeah, generic. Church for all of them. Um, but that's on your website. And the website, yeah. your website is? LeahTravels.com. Right. So I'm going to put a link to the exact uh, uh, story about the Notre Dame that we just talked about in the show notes as well mm-hmm. as secretjourneys.travel. But we've got to wind it up because time's got away. But what have we not talked about? Um, my goodness, there's so much luxury. I mean, this is, Paris is just, I mean, historically, they, the, the French have influenced what they've defined luxury, right? you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. So yeah. if you are looking for luxury, wow, you've you, come, you've come <laughs> to the right city. <laughs> you've come to the right place. And I think, uh, I think, like you said, you can't really go wrong if you want to spend money in Paris because there are a lot of places to do it. Uh, it's been great to have a guide or an insight into some of these places from you. Well, I do want to say that the ultimate, again, the ultimate luxury is being in Paris. And I think the greatest way that you can spend your time in Paris is just walking it mm. and taking in your surroundings. Mm. That. It doesn't matter if you have five euros or 5,000 euros in your pocket. You don't have to be rich to walk around and just enjoy the city. Mm, they say that they say that uh, Paris is where walking for pleasure was invented because they were one of the first cities to build the s- sidewalks, mm-hmm. footpaths. Yeah. Um, so, like, it really, uh, it, you know, it's, it's just so ingrained in the city. Yeah, yeah. And Pont Neuf was the first bridge with the right. sidewalk. I'm fascinated by Pont Neuf. I think I could do a whole episode on yeah. that. Because that is, a, that is th- which, uh, Lee is referring to the newest, the, well, the oldest bridge in Paris, mm-hmm. which was once the newest bridge. And Place Dauphine you have to put in there because that history is ridiculous. Do you want to do one day, uh, you know, I do these live videos. Uh, do you want to do one one day down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll do are, it. are you an expert on the area? Um, I have made myself a knowledgeable person <laughs> okay that is great okay so you guys uh what we're going to do at some point in the near future hopefully is we'll go and do a walk mm. me and you pond nerf it'll be windy but it'll be okay and then the plus dauphine it'll feel like we're in a mission impossible slash jason bourne movie okay good uh bring bring an earpiece okay you know, so okay. that we can pretend that we're talking to people up on the roof <laughs> um but great okay leah thank you for coming in the studio and sharing your wisdom thank you for having me Ah, there you go. As I said, Leah and I will 
be doing a walk show on Monday uh, today, the day I'm sitting in the studio. It's quite a nice day out there, so uh, it should be a pretty good walk, followed by a lot more walk shows. I've got the Notre Dame. In fact, the the man that uh, Leah was talking about in the interview, Philippe, and his colleague Comte, uh, I don't know who, but one of them will be showing me around the Notre Dame tomorrow on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I'm going to be walking up the Champs-Élysées towards Arc de Triomphe with the YouTuber Jay Swanson. On Thursday, property... Uh, guru, as I like to call it, Adrian Leeds from House Hunters International will be showing me around the Marais. On Friday, Biker Mart Tours is taking me to the gardens of Versailles. Versailles. Uh, that should be pretty cool. Uh, Saturday, it's the Canal Saint-Martin. And Sunday, to finish it off, it's a sunrise walk around the Eiffel Tower with tour guide April Pet. So, seven days, all free. You don't even need to be a Patreon supporter to watch this stuff. It's all on YouTube. Uh, I'm trying to grow the channel something every day. I'm sure there's something in there for you. So please, if you do one takeaway from this episode, it is to go and subscribe on YouTube and watch some of that stuff. But as I said at the start of the episode, this show is sponsored by French Today Audiobooks. It's teaching you traditional and modern French. It's audio, like you listen to it, you repeat after it. Camille, you might have heard her on the past couple of episodes. She's been a guest on the show. And uh, in fact, she's going to be back for an episode on Thursday for Valentine's Day. We're going to be talking about love language, French, uh, romantic sayings, nicknames for your loved ones. There's a little bonus episode coming out later in the week. But I figured I'd just walk you through where I'm up to. I haven't got any audio with her today. I'm just going to give you a little update for those of you who are learning along with me. And for those who aren't learning along with me, here's just a little bit where you can uh, maybe learn something for yourself. So I'm up to level two in the audiobook. I got five things that I noticed that I thought were kind of interesting that uh, I don't use and I didn't really know about the French language. So here's, here's a little way to impress your French friends if you use them. So they're just things I've noted down as I've been listening to the audio book and that I'm going to try and use. So one is uh, if you want to say I'm blue, I'm down, I'm down in the dumps, things aren't so good, you can say j'ai le cafard, j'ai le cafard, which is I think is pretty weird because uh, the cafard is a cockroach. So uh, if you say, I have the cockroach, it means I'm down in the dumps. And it's something you hear. People actually say this. Ah, I got the cockroach. Ah, I got the cockroach today. So there's one for you, j'ai le cafard. Other ones I thought were kind of funny. These aren't, uh, it's not like a list of insect-related things. It's just intriguing things I noticed. One was, uh, so when you're telling a story, if you want to say it's, it's Friday, like it was Friday, uh, one way that they say it is, uh, nous sommes vendredi, as in we are Friday. I quite like that. And when I was uh, when I was learning it and reading it, I was thinking uh, it's interesting with French and English the way that the two languages. Uh, you know, sometimes you hear people sort of translating literally in their head. I could imagine a French person saying, uh, "We are Friday," and not really thinking that there's anything wrong with it. it uh, it's a good reminder not to translate literally. Another that I hadn't heard before: um, the word for clothes, fringue, f r i n g u e s. I never heard that one before. I think I might have seen it before and wondered what it was, but there's a there's one that I learned. Another thing I thought was funny, a way to say school, la fac. Like it sounds like the swear word in English. So it's short for like faculty, you know? So if you say like uh, il est en fac de médecine, that's like he's doing uh, medicine at university. So there's another one I hadn't learned. And I had one I had two more here that I just I'd saw i it's the kind of thing that I reckon you hear when someone's speaking French and you kinda of get the context, but I'd never seen it written down before. So there's two. One one was don't worry. Ne t'en fais pas. Ne t'en fais pas. Don't worry. And the other is uh is that okay? And you say ça te va? Ça te va? Ça te va? Anyway, they're just five or six things that I noted down because I thought it was interesting. And me saying them out loud and repeating them is helping me learn. Maybe yeah, uh, you do the same thing. And when you hear Thursday's episode, Valentine's Day episode, listen to it in a quiet place. There's a lot of repeating to do. For example, the first five minutes is me trying to pronounce the Eiffel Tower in French, which has absolutely nothing to do with love, but it was something that I got stuck on. And if you're anything like me and you want to repeat as you learn, I highly, highly recommend that you do listen to it in a public place, like on the metro or... uh, I don't know, in class so that you can repeat and look like an idiot and uh, send in an email and let me know how it all goes because I've been getting a lot of emails from you guys from that episode recently where I was saying uh, je parle français comme une vache australienne I speak French like an Australian cow I've been loving getting the emails I had one from uh, a woman named Carla who is Peruvian so I was quite happy to have a Peruvian listener and she uh, she wrote to me and said je parle français comme une vache Peruvienne, which actually sounds quite nice. Uh, and I got a few other emails from you guys who have been trying the same trick. I'm glad 
to hear you taking my joke and using it with wild abandon. That's fun. Um, but anyway, if you want to learn French, they're the guys supporting this show. It is called French Today. And if you go to frenchtoday.com forward slash earful2, as in earful and then the digit 2, you get a further 10% discount off any audiobook that they've got on the website. So yeah, go and check it out. Buy the audiobooks. Learn French alongside me. And tune in on Thursday for the Valentine's Day episode. As for me, it's Monday in Paris. I'm in the studio. I've got to get over to Place Dauphine to film this uh, YouTube video. I hope to see you watching. And if you do watch, as always, leave a comment, interact. It's more fun that way. And that's why we do it live. So you've been listening to the Eiffel Tower. My name's Oliver G. I'll see you, well, every day this week, uh, unless you're listening in the future, in which case, I'll see you on Monday as always. Au revoir.